Hey folks, I'm Matt and welcome to my top 80 vintage board games of all time. We are finally here at the top 20, so let's get cracking. Uh, number 20 is 221B Baker Street. Now, this is an older game where you're Sherlock Holmes going on different cases trying to solve the mystery by visiting different areas around the board and gathering clues from the various clue books that you're provided with. Uh, this came out with a ton of expansions back in the day. I actually have the Ultimate Edition, which has all the expansions plus 20 new cases, so like 200 cases to solve from. And the clues are kind of like uh, crossword puzzle clues where it'll say, you know, something, it sounds like this. This is what uh, someone does on stage. Sing, aha, the guy's last name was Singer or maybe he was an opera guy, so it could be him. And I didn't know that the first time me and my wife played this game and she got it. And I was like, how did you get it right? And she went, because when it said, I think, I can't remember what the clue was. I don't want to give it away. But I said, oh, so it's a play on the word this. Oh, okay. And then I realized, okay, it's not really actual clues, clues to solve the mystery. It's crossword puzzle clues, like sounds like or this. This is the sound a bee makes, buzz, mm, buzzfeed. Ah, that must be something, you know, something like that. You, you jump from one conclusion to the next. Now, we when we first got this game, we played six games straight through. I love Sherlock Holmes. I love the world. I've read all the... Uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes stories at least three times. Probably going to read it again. Sherlock Holmes is one of my favorite characters. Now, I know there's a lot of Sherlock Holmes games out there, but none of them capture the essence of Holmes. At least for me, they don't. Uh, and this one does. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. There is really nothing to it. Just trying to get guesses. There's different levels to win. Uh, if you solve it with like five clues or less, you're a master detective. I've only done that once, and I was super proud of that. Uh, everything else I usually figure it out at the very end but uh, not very good of a detective and I mean say what you will about the game it is a lot of fun it's a simple game vintage game it captures the theme of Holmes and that's why it's my number 20 on this list my number 19 was number 29 on my list last year now that I've separated the list it has gone up a full 10 spots and that is Avalon Hills TV Wars and TV Wars you are once again a TV station in the 80s and you're trying to beat out your competition by providing the best shows, putting the best stars, you know, uh, ratings on there, critic reviews on there to beat out everyone else's and be the last station standing. Oh man, I've already talked about War of the Networks and how much I enjoyed that one. This one I enjoy much more because it has to deal with shows in the 80s back when I was watching TV. So I get a lot of the little jokes, the joke, uh, I can't think of one right now. Uh, I hate Lucy, you know, so I love Lucy, even though that went an 80s show, but it was re it was reruns that were going on w back in the day, and so they have a bunch of reruns like that, and I really do enjoy it. Uh, it it's a ton of fun to put different people together, uh, different stars on different shows to get different, you know, big viewers. You want to get the most viewers. If you have, every once in a while you have to go around the board, it's like a Monopoly board in a way, but you have to go around and when you land on a TV ratings war, that's when you have to put up your best schedule. Now, if you have the least amount of viewers out of all the players, your show will be eliminated from the game. And if you don't have any more shows, you know, at the end of a ratings war, you are eliminated. So it, it does have, <laughs> that's probably the only thing wrong with the game. If you get eliminated first, you're going to sit around for another 30, 45 minutes waiting for the game to end, <laughs> which kind of sucks. But at the same time, I really do love this game. I actually butchered uh, pieces from another game. I cannot remember the name of it right now, but it had these little radio station satellite dishes. And so I use those little TV satellite dishes as the pawns in my game. And uh, it just makes the game just pop a little bit more. But I do love TV Wars, which is why it's my number 19 on the list. My number 18 is fairly new to my collection. It is called Web of Gold. And Web of Gold, you are adventurers going through a cave trying to collect gold coins. Uh, you also have a spider. Each player controls a spider that can spin webs to trap other players while they're rummaging around the caves. And if so, maybe even bite them. And if they get up to five bites, they're out of the game. Uh, the, game uh, the game ends when someone collects the necessary coins needed to win the game. Uh, a simple game that I found in an ad 
of a comic book from 1987. I was reading it this year and I saw the ad and I was like, oh, that looks like a cool little game. I'd never heard anything about it. So an ad from 30 years ago convinced me to buy the game, <laughs> albeit used. Um, it's so hard to find complete though. Uh, I see incomplete copies floating around all the time, but not a complete copy. Now I was lucky enough to find a brand new in shrink copy. I mean, uh, my buddies and I punched out all the tokens and, and whatnot in the game. And it turns out that someone from my gaming group had this game as a kid and hadn't played it since then. So he was super excited when I got it and we played it for my big gaming group. This got a big gaming group release and my whole gaming group loved the game. It is simple but fun and, and you there are, there are items that you can search for that can help you out. Uh, but you know, and you can gang up on one person, of course, and take them out easily. Uh, I try. We played a little mean at first, and then I realized there was one one time I had this guy caught up in a spider web, and he could not get out because every time he tried to roll the dice to break free, I'd spin another web on my turn and stick him in there uh, harder. It, so you got to watch out. You could have you could really stop a player from scoring any points if everyone ganged up against them, and that wouldn't be fun. But the game is a lot of fun in general and we love playing it. Number 17 was number 37 on my list last year. It goes up 20 spots here on the vintage list and it is Star Trek The Game. Now this game looks extremely boring but what you're doing in the game is you are completing certain missions and then trying to make it back to your home base. Those missions could be find clean eye outpost or discover a new star system or you know transport an, amb an ambassador from one planet to the next. Whatever your mission cards say you you have to complete. Once you've completed, you reveal it. Once you have three missions complete, you try to zip back home and make it back to your home base. Again, the board looks boring. The cover art looks boring. The game, incredible. I love this game. Uh, again, I have to thank THX 1138 for showing me this game. Uh, I never would have bought it. Looking at it, the cover, looking at the pieces, I was like, ooh, this game looks boring. Oh my goodness. It is a very popular game. Uh, my nephews love playing it. This is another one that their friends, their friends always request uh, Tornado Rex and Star Trek. Those are the two games they request a lot. Uh, and Star Trek is just so much fun. And I've never seen a game, a vintage game, capture the theme of the TV show so well. Now I hear Star Trek Fleet Captains does this. And I'm sure it does it really well, but I don't even, I'm not even interested in getting Fleet Captains because honestly, Star Trek The Vintage Game is good enough for me. I mean, it really does deliver on that theme of Star Trek. So, uh, and I think it's kind of cheap to find online too. So, great game, my number 17 on the list. My number 16 is was uh, number 39 last year. So, I think it's moved up, what's that, 23 points on the ranks on this list here. And I'm sticking with the sci fi theme here. It is the Omega Virus. In the Omega Virus, you're kind of playing kind of as a team. You're gathering, you're on the space station, uh, gathering all these weapons, and then trying to locate where the Omega Virus is. Now, the location is different for each player. It's an electronic game where the Omega Virus is basically controlling the board. It's telling which player to go next. It won't go in turn. It may be red, blue, green, blue, red, yellow, red, blue, green. And it bounces around. I don't know how it determines who goes next. Next, but it's the smartest electronic game I've ever seen. You punch, punch in codes to see what, what you found in certain rooms and that's how the electronic device knows what room you're in and it will tell you where you can and can't go next. Uh, it keeps up with what items you have found too. Really smart. This is 1986 when this game came out. Now I saw this game when I was in Dallas, Texas and it was, uh, I don't know, it was for sale and they put 50% off on it and I was like, oh, I've never heard of this before. I said, let me try it out. Looks cool, looks space, you know, sci-fi-ish. I like sci-fi. And I look at the game and I play this game and it is an incredible game. I am just amazed at how smart the game is. Uh, the game folds out, has player boards uh, right there and when you have to close a section of the space station, because this is a time game. So as the Omega virus gets stronger, it starts shutting down sections of the space station. That's when you know you could lose the game. And even when you shut down a space station, you take your little leaflet form that tells you the gameplay and you flip it over on top of the board, but on top of the uh, on the back of that uh, leaflet when you flip it over is the gameplay it's, it's the player aid that's what I'm talking about 
It took me long enough to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, the player aids on both sides of the leaflet. So that's really cool. And uh, I do love how this game goes. Now, I don't get to play this game as much. And as I'm talking about it, I'm like, dude, I should be playing this game right now. Uh, I love Omega Virus. I think it's a fantastic game. If I'd have had this game as a kid, Oh my goodness, this has been my favorite game of all time, I think. But anyway, on my list right now, it is number 16. Number 15 took a huge jump in my ranks here. It was number 64 on my old list, and now that's on the vintage list. It moved up, what, that's 50, 49 spots, uh, I think. And it is Bargain Hunter. In Bargain Hunter, you are moving around a mall trying to get a shopping list of goods. Small appliances, big appliances, bedroom furniture, and whatnot. And you're looking for the best price. Now, deals change all the time in each store. You deal out new price cards for each store, so the deals are always changing, and even though toasters may be cheap at this store, their bedroom furniture is not. You have to go to another store to get the deal. But you gotta hurry because sales won't last forever. Only while supplies last, and then they switch up their sales cards, and then you made it to the store too late, you didn't get the deal. And this is such a smart game. When I first saw this game, it looked awful. It looks cheap, and I was like, I don't want this game. But I saw it in my antique store here in town for five bucks. I went, well, if I buy it for five bucks and it sucks, I'm just out five bucks. And the game was complete. I got it. We played it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I told you uh, when I did the review, this should this game should be repackaged as Black Friday the game because it, it is very thematic. You're trying to find where's the best deal. Uh, you have a credit card that has a thousand dollar limit and you have to have that card paid off before you can proclaim to be the winner. So you can have all your shopping list done, but you are $1,000 in debt. You have to, every time you move around the board, it's kind of like Monopoly, you get some money every time you pass, it's not go, it's something else. And so you use that money to pay off your card. Once you've paid off your card, you don't have any debt, then you win the game. So even buying expensive items, you know, I'll just stay in one store and buy just a ton of stuff. Yeah, but then you're gonna be in debt and then you have to get out of debt, where the bargain hunter is getting the best deal, saving their money and not going to be in debt by the end of the time they get the list. What a great game! <laughs> I really do. The more I play this game, the more I love it. Watch, if I play this a few more times, it's going to be up in my top 10 easily. Easily. Any of these games could be in my top 10 easily after a few more plays. But right now, it's number 15, Bargain Hunter. Awesome game. My number 14 was number 40 on the list last year. So it's moved up 26 spots, I believe. And it is It from the Pit. And it from the pit, you are running around a pit where there is a uh, mechanical monster, battery operated monster that you turn on and he moves around the board randomly snagging uh, with his hand at the players around the pit. And you're trying to get to the treasure at the end of the uh, pit there. The first person to land on it wins. Now there's two ways to get to that one. You can go the long way, which has you dipping in and out of the inner circle. You're going to stay outside. It's going to cost you a lot more space spaces to move around, but it will not grab you from those out, outward spaces. Or you can go my way, which is the dangerous way. Just go around the inside ring. Yeah, he's going to eat a bunch of you. Uh, I think you have four player pawns to play with. And the last time, I just recently played this game, and uh, uh, the last time he grabbed all three of my guys almost instantly, and my fourth guy got around and he won. <laughs> so it was risky. Uh, no, one else, uh, no one else had lost one. Well, one other guy had lost one other pawn. But uh, they were using the, kind of the outside ring and getting there slowly, but surely. So I do like the strategy there. I mean, it, any wrong move and my guy would have been swallowed up and I would have been out of the game. But the game plays really quick and it's a lot of fun. When I bought this game, I was, of course, getting into vintage board games. I'd never paid $35 for a game before, for a vintage game, I should say. And I was like, well, that's way too much for a vintage game. Remember, I was only playing like three a dollar, five bucks back then. I was like, 35 bucks, that's incredible. I can't believe I spent that much. And then I found it online. This game's going for like 100, 120 bucks. <laughs> Oh, okay, so 35 was a good deal. And I'll be honest, 35, I've got my money's worth out of this game. We have played this game a million times. My little nephews absolutely love the game. It is a super fun game. That is why it is number 14 on this list. My number 13 was number 31 last year. So it's moved up 18 spots here on a list of its own. And it is my Grail game. A game I had from my childhood that I had to rebuy. And thankfully, I bought it before the price shot way, way, way high on the 
internet. It is Fireball Island. On Fireball Island, you are trying to get a gem and then trying to get off the island. But watch out because every other player is coming at you because they want the gem too. And they will be rolling these little marbles, which are uh, dictate fireballs in the game, to knock you down to steal the jewel from you. First one off the island wins the game. Wow, Fireball Island, actually, they just announced this. Restoration Games said they're going to do a reprint of it. You know, kind of give it a facelift for 2018. And I got to be honest, the moment it goes on Kickstarter, it's got my money. I mean the full blast. I'm going to give my money away. That's one of two Kickstarters I already know I'm going to go for. Because <laughs> I, I know Fireball Island is going to be great. And it, it may move up to number one. I don't know. It may move into my you know regular board game list. It probably will. I love Fireball Island. I played it as a kid. I bought it online back when it was going for about 75 bucks. I felt kind of bad that I paid that much for it. But I was like, I really want this game. And uh, I got it. But now it goes for like $300 for a complete set. It's ridiculous. Oh, and they've come up with different uh, things you can add on to Fireball Island. Fireball Island has a huge fan group. And I love that. Someone made uh, jewels uh, just like the red jewel, except they made white, blue, and green. I bought them just for the heck of it. And I've, uh, I've attached different rules to them, like house rules to them, on different abilities you have when you get those jewels. And we have a blast playing Fireball Island. I always Always, always, always will love Fireball Island. I cannot wait for the reprint, but right now, this game stops on the list at number 13. My number 12 was number 32 on the list last year. Now on this vintage list, it has moved up 20 spots, and when I made a review of these games, everyone went nuts. It is Dark World. I love Dark World. Dark World is from Mattel. Uh, it's kind of this old school 90s dungeon crawl where you're going through there, beating bad guys, playing cards, getting Getting upgrades for weapons and you know just basically running through the whole castle or scenario if you have the expansions which are very hard to get now uh, but Village of Fear is a lot of fun these 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 expansions look nice the game looks nice the pieces look nice uh, the boards uh, the uh, well let me see there's a dragon on the third ex or second expansion who's, who looks really awesome I'm super happy I got these when I did because now you can't find the expansions they're really hard to find uh, I, I got a decent deal. I had to pay a little bit extra because I got them from the UK, so shipping cost me a little bit more. But other than that, they were really a good price. And uh, of course, I got a great price for the base set. You can get a good price for the base set. And basically, the base set would be all you would really need to play the game and enjoy it. But the game has those old school hero clicks like uh, figures that they, you know, you can put the points on them and click them from 1 to 10 on there to see how much life they have. Uh, it is an incredibly well designed game. It looks awesome. This is another one that if I would have had this growing up, this would have been my favorite game of all time too. I would have loved it. I love that uh, the stuff that could you just use cards. Like they have treasure chests. They made a real treasure chest. You could have just said, okay, here's the card it reveals. You get this sword. And for weapons, they just could have used cards again. No, they used actual weapons in the figure's hands. The figure's hands are, are hollowed out. And so you put the regular weapon in there and then you upgrade it with a golden weapon, <laughs> which is so cool. You may have the, the regular axe but then you got upgraded to the golden axe it just looks nice i love 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 uh, Dark World. I think it's a fantastic game. Now I know a lot of people are Hero Quest fans. That's what I hear about. Hero Quest, Hero Quest, Hero Quest. Hero Quest looks great too. I don't have any interest in it because I have Dark World and Dark World is good enough for me. Obviously because it's number 12 on my list. Number 11 was number 58 last year. It's moved up 47 amazing spots and it was the very first game I reviewed when I did my board game review show. It is called Basket. In basket, you're trying to take a ping pong ball basically as it rolls around the basketball court and shoot it through these little uh, metal prongs into a basket. Every five minutes, you'll switch uh, to a different side of the board and play out the game, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. I love basket. I was actually able to retrieve a copy a similar copy of what I had uh, back in the day. I think it's a late 80s edition. And so I used to play this game all the time as a kid. I loved Basket. Uh, and this is one of the earlier vintage games I got as well because I said, oh, I love that game back in the day. I want to play that game again. And my little nephews love playing it too. We don't play it as much as we used to. Uh, and that's probably why it didn't make my top 10. It's just outside the top 10. But man, Basket has always been 
working great for me. Now at Skeel, uh, sometimes those metal prongs don't bounce the same way. That ping pong ball doesn't bounce the same way it should every time. But sometimes you can hit it just right. And nothing sweeter than hitting that three from the far court and winning the game or watching it spin around the rim and then drop in. Oh, I love it. Love the game. My number 11, basket. Oh my gosh, we're in the top 10 already. Okay, so at number 10, this is the one that jumped the highest from last year's combined list to this year's separate list. It was number 71 last year. That's right, folks. This went up an amazing 61 spots. I love the game so much. It is Donkey Kong the card game. In Donkey Kong the card game, you are like a little Mario guy. You're playing cards to build the uh, set for Donkey Kong. You're playing barrel cards on top of uh, regular cards to stop other players, but if they play a jump card, they can defeat that. You're playing little fireball cards on some of the ladders, but if they play a hammer card, they can defeat that. And the first one to Donkey Kong, by exact count, wins the game. Now this game is a little bit harder than what I just explained, because you cannot pass another player. If you bump into another player and you can't move anymore, and you have some more spaces to move, you must bounce all the way back to the beginning. So there's going to be a lot of that bouncing back and forth and bouncing up and down. Uh, if you can't get straight to Donkey Kong and you get you get bottlenecked up there, there's going to be a lot of people dropping from the bottom, you know. And I I, I like it. The game plays really simple, really fun. Uh, this is a game that Flip from Flip the Table uh, podcast uh, actually showed me a few years ago at Gen Con, and I had a blast on this. I could not believe how much fun this game was. I got a copy brand new, had to punch out everything, you know, unwrap the cards for the first time, and it was super nice. It is a fantastic game. I know I've talked about Cubert being fun, and Cubert is fun, but Donkey Kong beats it uh, right now. It's a fantastic card game. My number 10 on the list. Number nine was number 28 on my list last year. Now that I've separated the list, it's moved up 19 spots, and it is Hotel Tycoon. Hotel Tycoon is basically Monopoly on steroids. What you're doing is you're moving around the board in your airplane jet, and you are collecting uh, different pieces of your buying land and then building hotels on them, but not the boring little red hotels from Monopoly. These are nice sculpted little hotel pieces. They're kind of cardboard with little plastic caps on them, but they look incredible, and once you are done playing this game, the board looks super cool. I I love Hotel Tycoon. Uh, all my podcasts, all my nephews talk about how much they love Hotel Tycoon as well. And we all sing different songs for different hotels. We have a song for the Coconut Beach Resort, which is our favorite song to sing, which for some reason, even though it's not the best hotel to get, we all want it so we can sing that song. Uh, and we're going to create theme songs for everything, but it just makes the game fun for us. Uh, hotel Tycoon, awesome. If you have someone who just loves playing Monopoly and they don't want to play anything else, give them Hotel Tycoon. It's not that much different. It's, it's more fun than Monopoly, way more fun than Monopoly, and it shows them that there are other games out there that are fun as well. So it may be a game you can use to kind of crowbar them out of that just Monopoly phase. But Hotel Tycoon, awesome, awesome game. My number nine on the list. Number eight was number 53 on my list last year. On this vintage list, it moves up 45 spots, and that is the simple game of Crocodile Dentist. In Crocodile Dentist, you are taking turns pressing down teeth on a crocodile until one snaps its mouth shut. If you are that unlucky person, you are out of the game. This game takes maybe 15 seconds to play or less, depending on how fast you're going back and forth pressing them teeth down. I can't tell you how many times I have played this little game. This game comes out to my board, big board game group. We play as a filler game. This game has come to work with me. We played it at work. Uh, we. This is just such a simple little game and I do love it so much. I couldn't believe it's been around for over 15 years now. But uh, and, and the tooth always changes. I don't know how they decide where it, where it goes next, but it's always something different. And it is such an incredibly fun game to play. I love it so much. Crocodile Dentist, you're number eight on my list. Number seven was number 50 last year on my list. It moves up 43 spots, and it is the classic game, Boggle. Uh, I love Boggle. I love finding words. 
Uh, I am super good at this game. In fact, if you play me, I uh, think I can beat you. Uh, it's been a long time since I've lost at Boggle, and no one plays me at Boggle now, which is why I only can play it on my app now. Uh, I used to do something for everyone who played me. I'd give them one free turn, like a full two minutes, whatever that sand, sand timer gives you, to get as many words and count all those points. And once you do that, then when you play me, I will beat you every time. <laughs> I know my words. I know, I know how to put things together. I love looking for different words. Uh, when a puzzle's really hard, it just encourages me more to find different words, look at things differently. Uh, it's such a great game. I love it, love it, love it. Don't get to play it as much anymore unless it's on my phone as an app. But Boggle, it's a great game, classic game, and number seven on this list. My number six game was number 34 last year, so it's moved up 28 spots here on the vintage list, and it is the highest ranked 3M game on my list, and my favorite 3M game, Mr. President. Oh, and Mr. President, you are running for the President of the United States. You're either going to be Republican or Democrat, and you the box uh, sets up like a ballot box, and you have these cards. You'll be drawing these cards from your own specific hands, and you'll be uh, casting those votes for that particular region in that ballot box. Now, there are different states listed on each card, but for every region you put that in, those are the votes that will count for that particular state. And of course, you're trying to get the most states, uh, votes in the most states, uh, while also countering your uh, opponent there. You may have to do some fundraising, you may have to do some advertisement to get you some more you know, votes, you may even have to uh, debate your opponent to see if you can win some of their votes too. And you can play four players, it's two, two teams of two with one person being the vice president. And I've never done that, I've just played as a two player game. Again, I don't get to play many two player games, but when I do, oh my goodness, Mr. President is the one that's gonna come out. I actually brought this over to my big board game group. Uh, one, one of those times where someone showed up super early and no one else was there, I said, hey, let's break out Mr. President. He didn't think much of it when he saw the box. He's like, mm. And we started playing it, he started getting into it. And then when we were tallying up all the votes at the end, region by region, he was like, man, this feels like an election. I mean, I'm super excited here. Because he went from losing to, oh man, he had, he had me by 200 vote, electoral votes or whatever, and then I won California, and it all went down the hill from there. And I ended up winning. But it was a close one too, it was a close election. But he ended up loving the game. He said, I was shocked at how, how much fun it is. And you would be too. Looking at the game, it looks like nothing. Believe me, when I saw the game, I had zero interest in that game until uh, I, I saw it uh, played by someone else. I was like, oh, wait a minute, that looks like a lot of fun. I found it for cheap at an antique store, bought it, uh, played it, love it, love it, love it. Mr. President, awesome game. Best 3M game they ever made, in my opinion. That's why it's number six on this list. Number five was number 53 on my list last year. It has moved up 48 spots now that's on the list of its own. And this is the highest classic, I should say classic, uh, game on my list. It's a card game. It's called Nerds. Nerds is very similar to Solitaire, where you're playing the cards, you know, white, um, I mean, red on black, and in descending order from king to the two. And uh, you're putting the ace up in the, you know, the top of your stack. Now, that's what's different about Nerds. And Nerds, that wherever you play on that ace, anyone can play. That's an all play. So someone else can play their two of spades, and someone else can play their three and four of spades. Then I can play my five of spades on top of theirs. And that's how you're going to get points in the game. And all the while, you have a deck of 13 cards that you're trying to get rid of. Now, if someone calls Nerds, meaning they went out of their stack first, then you're going to get minus two cards out of the pile there in the middle for every one card you have in, in your Nerds pile left over. Now, there's uh, strategies to this game. When you run out, you don't have to call Nerds. You can keep playing and trying to run up your score. And then when you see other players, you know, maybe getting some Nerds cards off of their deck, then call it. But call it after you've gotten some points. There's strategy involved with this game. I love this game. The only reason it is not number one is because I can hardly get people to play it with me anymore. Another game that I am awesome Awesome at. I love Nerds so much. My wife and I have a version where we have to play really nice. We have to wait for the other person to run out of their Nerds cards before we can say Nerds. But that's no fun. I like the competitive style. Uh, a few years ago, my whole family got together and we had a game of eight of us. 
playing nerds at the same time. It was insane. And if we ever do that again for another holiday, watch nerds go to number one on my list. I love this card game so much. But for right now, it's number five. Number four was number 43 last year on my combined list. Now on the separated list, it moves up 39 spots, and it is King Oil. And King Oil, you are uh, basically a big oil guy trying to drill on this uh, 3D board full of holes and seeing if there's oil there. And depending on how far the needle goes down determines how much oil is in the hole. If it goes all the way down, the oil is dry and you wasted your money. If it doesn't, if it doesn't hardly go in there, that means it's full of oil and you're going to make tons of money. And you're trying to find as many of those you know, oil springs as you can find so you can set up the pumps and start making your money and put out uh, pipelines into other people's land, start charging them tax, and you're basically just running someone else out of business. And of course, you're buying new land around the board as the game progresses. Now, to keep the game uh, you know, replayable, they have three little plastic discs underneath the board that you can move around to, any, to make a million different combinations for what those depths of the holes on top of the board will be. So the game is never the same. Uh, for instance, there's one game we played where my little nephew took some land. It was just bad. It didn't have hardly any oil on it. But then the next game, we all avoided it and I bought it and it had tons of oil on it. <laughs> but we all avoided it from the last game. We thought, oh, it's just always bad. No, man, you, uh, just a slight turn of those discs can change the entire game. And I really do enjoy that. I love how this game works. I love how it plays. My nephews absolutely adore this game. My number three vintage game of all time was number 15 on my list last year. So it moves up 12 spots now that it's on this vintage list. And it is from GDW Games. It is Campaign Trail. And Campaign Trail, you're moving around a uh, map of the United States, visiting different cities and gathering uh, votes. Whoever has the most votes in each state wins those electoral votes. And of course, whoever has the most electoral votes wins the presidency. And folks, uh, when I reviewed this game, I told you it is cheap. It is the cheapest material ever made for a board game ever. Uh, the board is actually a paper map. looks like a road map. It kind of feels like that, but a little bit thinner. And the uh, pieces are chitsy, brittle little plastic pieces that are garbage. But for some reason, I love this game. I love it. You're just you're just moving around. Sometimes you have airplanes, so you got special abilities. Sometimes you can go and uh, fly over here. You can do debates and fundraising and stuff like that. But oh man, Campaign Trail is just so much fun. It actually has my hometown. It doesn't mention it, but it has my hometown on the board. It's exactly in the location where it has to be talking about mine. And I, I like that as well, that I can visit my hometown to get votes for my state. I would definitely uh, love to have this game where you're playing six people at one time. Uh, the most I've ever played, I think we played three. Uh, but yeah, the more the merrier. It is such a fun game because you're keeping up with your travel and the travel of your opponents to make sure you've visited that state more than they have. And of course, you're trying to go for the big states too. But if you see a fight between two big ones in a big state, try someone tried a strategy of getting a bunch of small states. It didn't work because they didn't have that one big state to depend upon, but they did get a ton of votes <laughs> and they came in close. Uh, but uh, the game has that little strategy of where should I go? Where should I visit? Where, when should I just give up the fight? You know, these two people are fighting over California all day long. There's no way I'll catch up with them. So let me go somewhere else. And that's kind of how politics and presidency run. You know, if you don't have a chance in that state, you may as well cut your losses and, you know, pound back on these states that you're close in and maybe win them over. I really, really do love this game. I, uh, I played it a lot, of course, last year during the elections. And this year, I haven't played it uh, yet, but I do want to play it again. I love it to pieces. Campaign Trail, my number three. My number two was number 17 last year on the list. It has moved up 15 spots, and it is Thunder Road. And Thunder Road, it's basically Mad Max the board game. You're moving off this modular board that, you know, just... it. it, it breaks apart in half and you can add on pieces so the road is never ending and you're trying to destroy all your competition either by shooting them, ramming them or whatnot, having them run into you know burning uh, smoldering cars. This game has a huge fan base and I have seen some really awesome tricked out boards uh, for this game. I really hope it gets a reprint. I highly doubt it ever will because I'm sure it's tied up to a lot of legal reasons they can't really reprint the game but 
but it looks amazing. It is such a fun game. Every time I bring this game out with my nephews, we play it not once, but 10 times. We just can't stop playing it. It is so much fun. That is why I love it, and that is why it's my number two on this list. And so here we are at number one. Woo! My number one was number 25 on the list last year. That means it moves up 24 spots to claim the number one uh, prize here. And to be honest, there was no doubt about it when I made the list. When I said, okay, this game's got to be number one because I love it. It's going to shock you. The McDonald's game. <laughs> <laughs> from the 70s, man. Uh, this game, you're running around a board, uh, giving, uh, trying to get orders right, and g gather as many points and resources as you need. Uh, what happens is when one player lands on the let's go to McDonald's space, everyone has to yell, let's go to McDonald's! And then they, someone reads the order, and when they say please, that's when you have to pull it from your cart of goodies. And if you don't have the necessary order, well, then you can't fulfill it. But if you do, and you're the first one, you have to throw your marble into the sign stand and the marble that hits the bottom first gets to give the order. So you could be hustling it and man, don't think about just dropping it in there. Some people have shot it in there while someone's dropping theirs and they beat that other player. The entire time you're playing this game, you are having fun. And uh, it, it just, I, I wish this game had an expansion to include McRibs and Chicken McNuggets and Happy Meals and everything else that now exists at McDonald's. I, I just, I really do enjoy this game. Uh, every time I first time I played it was at Gen Con with Flip from Flip the Table, and uh, this is when I first met him. We played this game, and I loved it. I bought it on eBay. Uh, it was an incomplete copy, but Flip sent me the uh, pieces I need to complete my uh, complete my copy. I played this game a million times. My big board game group doesn't know what the big deal is. They really don't like the game. They don't understand why I do. I friggin' love the game. And uh, uh, my vintage group uh, does love the game as well. My nephews love it. Uh, it is just a super fun game. And I think I'm gonna go to McDonald's right now that I'm talking about it. They need to reprint this game. Listen to me, McDonald's. You want your profits to go up? Reprint this game. Then everyone will wanna go back to McDonald's because that board game was awesome. And that's my number one, folks. Folks, I hope you enjoyed my top 80 vintage games of all time. I know I enjoy doing this. Hey, watch out because I'm about to do my top 100 board games of all time. I'll see you then. Take care.